I started feeling um, interested in exploring what Jasmine had to offer, which is that she stopped offering the 21 day process, but she offers a darkness meditation retreat in Thailand. Oh, yeah. So, what exactly would a darkness retreat entail? Could you enlighten us about what that exactly means? In every tradition, the yogi of India, the Qigong masters of China, and I've heard that even the ancient Essenes and the ancient Egyptians had alchemical practices where they would go into a dark cave to meditate in darkness for a number of days, sometimes weeks or months, in complete darkness. And in that state, you can have a really powerful, much deeper, juicier experience of the meditation and also really profound insights and understanding about life can come to us when we meditate in complete darkness. Um, what exactly happens? What, what happens physically? Well, I can speak volumes about, I mean, I, there's someday, I think every single person who attends a darkness meditation retreat, when they come out of it, they have at least a book or two that they can write about their journey darkness because it's really a profound experience is is as if you know meditating for decades but all crammed into that week and a half um, my own personal experience is that in the darkness the science says that you start to produce DMT the visionary molecule after about the third day so instead of producing melatonin from your pineal gland which is the sleep hormone you sleep a bunch in the beginning, mm -hmm. and you're all done sleeping, <laughs> and then you're just awake 24 7 the rest of the time, many of us, with little naps in between, maybe. And you shift into this really kind of beautiful, lucid dreaming state. And from that state, you come to realize that you come to a different experience of your relationship with the physical and the non physical world. And the physical becomes less solid, and the dream world becomes more real to you. And as you do your meditation practice, maybe ask for answers or inner guidance, the answers come to you not just in terms of like an intuitive feeling that we often get when we meditate, but it comes in crystal clear visions, like HD TV, <laughs> but more 3D than like IMAX. IMAX. <laughs> yes, IMAX visions come to you, and you have no more doubt. You know, maybe you ask the question, what is my divine purpose? Why did I come to this planet? What is my work? Or you might just ask very specific questions to solve a specific practical problem in your life and instead of the answers coming into you in a feeling or an intuitive knowing it also comes with you really clear in IMAX visions and so you just feel confident and once you've had that experience that you have this capacity for for getting inner visions like that it's like it opens that circuitry so that afterwards when you do meditation when you come back out into the world you have a different level of certainty and confidence and, and access to answers that maybe you didn't have before. Would you say that it kind of helped lead you into the pranic consciousness? Could you maybe define what this term pranic is, how it originated, how is it connected to the festival? Yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> pranic consciousness means the consciousness where you're aware of the prana. But the thing is, everybody has pranic consciousness. Everybody is aware that, that we live in a physical world, but that there is non-physical influences that the ancients they call prana or chi or different terms. But essentially, it is this dimension of life that is the energetic dimension that, that is really the spirit energy that is animating the physical world. I, 
I would say that that is the prana, the chi, and so on. So being a pranic conscious being means that you have this awareness that the world is not just what it appears. You know, that you know that there is a non-physical, <laughs> emotional, mental, spiritual dimensions of life that are equally as important, maybe more important than the material, physical dimension of life. That you, you have a balance in the way that you perceive reality that yeah, there's the physical dimension of life, but there's a lot more to it, and that you can take advantage of all these aspects of life, and, and in doing so, life becomes a lot more exciting, <laughs> a lot more interesting, a lot more fun, and there's never a dull moment, because, because you perceive that, wow, there is spirit breathing through all of life all the time, and, and you never feel lonely, Sounds you like a feel, plus. <laughs> you, you don't just kind of philosophize that we're all interconnected, but actually that is your moment-to-moment -moment living experience of life, that we all are connected and that, for example, when you're, when you're around a tree and, you know, breathing with a tree, you feel this intimacy with the tree. Even though on the physical dimension, Here's a physical tree and here's my physical mm -hmm. body. But you don't experience yourself as being separate. You experience this really deep, intimate interflow between you and the tree. And likewise, we can have that experience with all of life everywhere. And to me, that is the pranic consciousness because we don't overemphasize the physical dimension, which on the surface looks like all these separate objects. Our, our primary experience of reality is that energetic dimension of life so that we feel really intimate and really in love with all of creation. Wow. That's the pranic consciousness. Mm -hmm.